The Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam about Dajjal. That he would ride on a donkey. And the donkey would travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey would have his ears stretched out wide. My opinion, which I hope you will share with me, is that that donkey is already here in the world. This is religious symbolism with which we began the lecture. The donkey is the modern aircraft. And since the Antichrist brings with him the modern aircraft, the Antichrist commands the skies. You can't, you cannot compete with him or rival him in power in the skies above. He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water would reach him up to his knee. Again, I want to suggest to you that we are dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. Rather, it is the technology which allows you to go down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up pieces of an aircraft which crashed and reassemble the aircraft 95%. That technology is in the world today. The Antichrist would be jumping about between the heavens and the earth. Jumping about, said the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, I want to suggest to you that this is not to be interpreted literally, that we are dealing with religious symbolism. It refers to our modern exploration of the heavens above the satellites that go around the earth and the shuttle aircrafts that go up and down in fact <coughs> in all of these we see pointers towards a scientific and technological revolution which would sweep the world and the mastermind behind that scientific and technological revolution is the Antichrist. He said that the earth, the earth, would yield, the earth would yield its treasures to the job. Now, go back home and study British history as I am doing now. And you would see that the scientific and technological revolution was led by the island of Britain at every significant step of the way. The earth would eat its treasures to the job. Last year, my wife and I visited the city of Kimberley in South Africa. Kimberley is famous for its diamonds, the Kimberley diamonds. Somewhere around the middle of the 19th century, a little African child was playing and discovered a stone that was sparkling. The child took the stone back to his father. The father took the stone to the European commissioner. 
the European Commissioner sent the stones to Johannesburg. And when they examined the stone, they found that it was one of the biggest diamonds that had ever been discovered. And that was this, the trigger that now led to the exploration for diamond and gold <coughs> in southern Africa. But it was British technology at work to discover the diamond veins down deep down in the earth. Without that British technology, you could not have done it. And then they began to dig these huge man-made holes. And in Kimberley, we saw the biggest one of all. My wife and I stood at the, at the, the edge of this big hole, big hole. You could put a couple of aircraft down inside there. And way down at the bottom of the hole, way down deep inside the earth, they went and they mined the diamonds. Out of that Kimberley diamond mine, they extracted, you know, a wheelbarrow? Well, there were five wheelbarrows at the side of the mine there. And they were filled with plastic nuggets. And this was meant to show us how many diamonds were mined at Kimberley before the mine was closed down in 1914. All of that effort of digging this big, 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 big hole in order to get five wheelbarrows filled of diamonds. In 1914, the stage was set. The Zionist movement had taken control of the diamond mines of South Africa and used a man named Cecil John Rhodes as a front man. The Rothschild Bank of Europe, a Jewish bank, financed him and they were able to get to harvest all those diamonds and then use the sale of those diamonds to build up a war chest so by 1914 they could close it down I want you to recognize that Britain was the leader of the world in the technology which led to all of this. The Prophet said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam <coughs> that the last people to come out to Dajjal or the Antichrist will be women. The last people to come out to Dajjal or the Antichrist will be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down his wife and sister and daughter to protect and preserve them from Dajjal, the Antichrist. Indicating that when Dajjal's mission is close to its climax. Something strange is going to sweep the world of women. That they are going to be deceived, utterly deceived. That what would appear to them to be the road to progress, which they will eagerly grasp and embrace, what would appear to them to be a revolution in the world of women, the likes of which mankind never witnessed before, would in fact be Dajjal's deception. 
I believe you will share with me the view that the prophecy of the Blessed Prophet Muhammad والسلام, is today being unfolded in the modern feminist revolution and its so-called struggle for women's liberation. That also is a topic which is coming up in our series of lectures. But do you know that Britain, the island of Britain, initiated and led the feminist revolution? I present all of this information to you to argue the case that the island in the hadith of Tamim al-Dari is the island of Britain. Now then, I notice <coughs> that when the jar is released in a day which is like a year, and Britain is his headquarters, I notice as a student of international relations, I notice that Britain strangely, strangely, strangely becomes the ruling state in the world. Come on, you explain to me. How do you explain a little obscure island off the coast of Europe, which never walked on the stage of history? An island that Napoleon contemptuously dismissed as a nation of shopkeepers. How do you explain that that little island establishes its rule over the whole world? Pax Britannia. Britain rules the world. I want to suggest to you tonight that the only man who can explain the emergence of Britain as the ruling state in the world at the time when it emerged is a man named Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. And the explanation is that this is the work of the Antichrist. In 1940, if you would go back and do some research, you will find as yet <coughs> air power has not as yet come. Your armies commanded the land and your navy commands the sea. And Britain, Britain controls the seas of the world. In 1914, Britain commanded every strategic naval port in the whole world. This was not by accident. It is time for us to sit back now and read history once again. 